Nana Banana Pro is out and by far the best AI image editor out there. Officially, it is known as Gemini 3 Pro Image and it is powered by Gemini 3, which makes an incredibly powerful combo for image generation and editing as it can do complex processing through its state-of-the-art reasoning and world knowledge. What puts it apart from previous models is the fact that it can draw knowledge direct from Google searches and use that knowledge to create the image. On top of that, it vastly improves on all the previous capabilities, such as multi-angle views, context editing, and image composing. So let's see what it can do. Nano Banana Pro is accessible in AI Studio, Anti-Gravity, which is the new IDE from Google, in Gemini, and via API to other third-party platforms, such as OpenArt or Weavy AI, which can host multiple AI models. To use the Pro version in AI Studio, you need a paid API key, which now is much more expensive compared to the previous Nano Banana version, or Gemini 2.5. However, you can access this model with the Gemini platform, where you can get one month free. And not only can you access the Pro model, but also the other tools by Google, such as video and code creation. And don't forget, you can still use all the workflows and prompts from the previous Nano Banana in this Pro version and they will just receive a great boost in quality. You can check out a previous video for more details on these prompts. What I will focus on are the areas which are new and have dramatically improved in quality. In Gemini, there are two models to choose from, Fast and Thinking, which utilizes Nano Banana Pro and Gemini 3 together. On the tools, it lets you use Google's other tools and platforms such as video generation and coding if you want to use that directly. First up is the upgrade in aspect ratios outpating and upscaling. So now you have the ability to set any aspect ratio and when you combine this with a reference image you're basically outpating to generate the sides. As an example I'll drop in this Georgian looking city and prompt resize this image to 16 to 9 by preserving all key architectural elements, buildings and landscape with no distortion and loss of detail. The continuity of the architecture is excellent. When you use Generative Expand in other software such as Photoshop, often when you extend the buildings, it degrades greatly. One of the main reasons for this fidelity is that the model thinks through Gemini 3. You can expand this and see how it is analyzing what to create. It is very interesting to read. As you can see, it is picking out key buildings, styles, and deciding what the best prompt is. You can also download high quality 2K images from here, and it can also go up to 4K. If you're using AI Studio, in the UI, these are built into the right side here, where you can set the ratio, resolution, and whether to use Google search understanding. But for Gemini, you can prompt these in directly. This also works just as well for interiors and more complex perspectives. I'll prompt resize this image to 16 to 9 by preserving all the key architecture elements, windows, walkways, and skylight, with no distortion and loss of detail. Perfect. You can also resize this to any ratio, so even a panoramic 2 to 1. And you can see that the skylight, circles and continuity of the balustrades is excellent here. Far better results than you get with the AI in Photoshop. By combining Gemini 3 Pro's advanced reasoning with real-time Google search capabilities, the model can accurately identify real-world locations and enrich the images with precise context-aware annotations. It enables more insightful and relevant image labeling. Here I've taken a screenshot from Google Earth of Prague's Old Town Square and prompted annotate Old Town Square in Prague with its key architectural building elements. Now it has labeled correctly the Old Town Hall and Memorial, but it is being a bit lazy with the rest of the image. So let's push it a bit more and prompt find more historical buildings and label them too. Amazing. It has added two more churches which are correctly labeled. So sometimes the AI models just need a bit more of a push to get results you need. If you want to go further, you can ask the model to make highlights or change the styles of the annotations. So this can be an excellent time saver for factual diagrams. And this is a great improvement on the Nano Banana 1, which would have trouble with the text spelling and picking out certain buildings. While on the topic of infographics and diagrams, you can create images with just facts taken from Google search using Gemini Pro. Here I will generate an architectural timeline and prompt, create an illustrated and annotated linear timeline of Zaha Hadid Architect's 10 famous buildings. Here I'm being deliberate 
and not specifying which buildings, as I want to give AI the flexibility to think and decide for itself which buildings it will choose and why. If I expand the thinking, you can see that it is searching for Hadid's key buildings, identifying the most prominent ones, and deciding to place them chronologically based on my request. And the results are astonishing. The illustrations are very well depicted and are instantly recognizable. I've checked some of these dates and buildings and they look spot on. Even for the Haida Aliyev Center, it gives extra facts, such as that it won the design of the year in 2014. I can see incredible potential for this kind of workflow. It is great for all sorts of general knowledge and infographics. Here I have asked one for CLT diagrams. And it is taking the key benefits and applications. I would advise on giving it more direction as the applications are very generic. But Nano Banana has come a long way in terms of text creation and knowledge integration. You can bring together all these features and based on an image, create a sectional perspective which will leverage angle changes, labeling and understanding of general spaces and contextual understanding. I dropped in the perspective of a performing arts center and prompted Using this reference, create a perspective section of this performing arts center, include a section through the auditorium and main public spaces, keeping as realistic as possible. Label the key spaces and render this section. Let's take a look first at its thinking. It goes through the architecture. It has made an assumption that the source image is Lincoln Center, New York City, which is not quite right, although the context is based in New York. And then it goes on to list the key components. I have to say that just from one image, it's amazing what it has created once again. It has chosen the rear volume of the building to place the auditorium, but you can see it has kept the same cladding, lobby positioning, and street context. All the labels make sense, even the orchestra pit and plaza levels make sense. Let's take this even further and ask to annotate the levels. From lower level to roof level, it has numbered and labeled them in a logical manner. If I specified heights, it could even add these. Nano Banana has become an incredible illustration tool. One of my favorite workflows is to reference multiple images and compose into a scene. The official release says you can combine up to 14 images. However, they do recommend only five or six for the best results. I will feed in a pavilion in an outdoor city and with four reference images. And the prompt will be blend these four images Pavilion Sky City Plaza group into a single coherent photorealistic of a sculptural pavilion illuminated by linear lights in an outdoor plaza in a modern city at dusk. Make them look natural and integrated. Now, this is not bad at all for a composition. It has centered the pavilion and even extended the bits of the pavilion I left out in the original image. My main complaint would be that actually that it has followed too closely the original references. For example, I wouldn't mind if the sky and the pose of the people were slightly different to blend together better for the composition. However, the lighting is falling correctly on the people in the scene, and the integration with the plaza tiles is excellent. The way the pattern lights and shadows are scattered on the ground is also remarkable. Camera angles. Creating different views for one image is nothing new in Anubana. However, in Pro, it has received a big upgrade. I'll take this biophilic inspired interior and prompt. Generate the same scene from different angles, perspectives, while maintaining visual consistency across viewpoints. It is giving me five views with incredible multi view consistency. Take a look at this first image. It has done a view from the opposite side of the initial reference, while keeping the furniture strip lightings the same. The bottom two left images are almost the same, but the bottom right close up is a nice abstract shot they added in. If you want more specific views and angles, of course, just prompt them in directly. Advanced text rendering. The Pro version has a large upgrade for text understanding, translation, and creation. I have this generic text in this reference, and I want to change the studio name. I will prompt, change the text in this reference to say, Atelier Verdant Space. Keep the text the same font and style, and the rest of the scene the same. Perfect. Text is matching my input and the font and backlighting is kept the same. No complaints. Now let's push the text and translation understanding. I'll prompt, translate the name to Japanese. 
Now this is interesting. Rather than giving me an image, it has explained its thinking, giving me three different ways to translate the name to Japanese. It has even given recommendation whether I want to translate directly or a natural sounding one. I'll go for option two. The model has seemed to be confused by my prompt as it was not specific enough, so I'll edit the prompt and say change the text to Midori no Atorie in Japanese. The lettering in kanji looks spot on. I like this more conversational, thoughtful model as it can act as a design assistant through verbally explaining ideas rather than jumping straight into an image. In painting and in context edits has been greatly improved too. Through text or simply scribbling on an image, you can directly modify the image. Of course, some APIs and apps allow you to directly doodle on the reference image within the app, but you can simply use a snipping tool or paint to highlight an area in red and paste it in like here. I'll prompt, replace the red marked areas in the reference with a boutique coffee shop, which blends in with the existing brick architecture. Very nice. The ground floor has been replaced with a design that complements the existing brick building with nice wood and warm tones. I like the fact that it has even named the coffee shop Brickworks Coffee. Excellent contextual understanding. You don't necessarily need to draw in red to edit areas. You can describe using text what you'd like to change to. For example, you can ask, remove the tree and place a group of students walking by. Now the tree is gone and a group of students have appeared. But I don't like the fact that they are blocking the coffee shop, so I'll prompt to move them to the left and add some more life to the shop with more people inside. Much better. Both staff and customers have been added with some outdoor seating, and the details are very well composed. My only adding these seated customers and, and integrating them into a complex scene like this manually would be a very tough job. To finish off with, I would like to take you through Gemini Pro's ability to reference from real context and generate with Nano Banana Pro. You can take a real building and ask to reconstruct it or use as a reference to make something new. For example, I'll prompt, make a set of photos from internal and exterior of the New York Guggenheim Museum. Here it is taking me through the view, basing it on real world information and the museum's design. Remember that it is generating these images and not taking the originals. So of course you'll see that there are variations from the original. However, what is interesting to see is that I can find information about the design, such as the interior, rotunda, skylights, and spiraling ramps, which are key components. The generated interiors are actually very beautiful recreations, and not meant to be perfect representations. You may ask, what's the point of this? Well, for one, it is to show you that this model can be used to study and draw and design and references from real life. And you can also take some of these ideas and then feed them into new sites or other references to combine them into new designs. Here, I'll ask to take the design and put it in another context, such as in London by the River Thames. Well, you can see the results are quite bizarre, with this concrete spiral and random London landmarks. But it is still interesting to see how we can understand cities and various landmarks. Gemini Pro is also able to find lesser-known buildings and generate drawings from these. Here, I've asked for an elevation drawing of a chapel by Stain Studio, which looks like this. And now the generation, it has given me a set of elevations from the sculptural chapel. Very impressive, considering all I gave the model was the name of the building and the architect, and is following this image and the form very closely. In conclusion, this jump from Gemini 2.5 to Gemini Pro with Nano Banana Pro is incredibly significant and meaningful. The upgrades are clearly evident, and this ability for image generation to be combined with intelligent searches and reasoning is a remarkable step forward as an AI design co-pilot. It is the best image editing model out there right now, although it comes at a price. As if it is used for the API, it is much more expensive than the Nano Banana one, However, you can use it on other platforms such as OpenArt or Gemini here, and the pricing is much more reasonable. Try this new groundbreaking model for yourself and see you in the next video.